داشته باشید در درون پادگان ولی است پادگان استقابات سابق که یکی از پادگان های سپاه هستش اینا دو زندان دارن برای خودش The Revolutionary Guard is building its own prisons. The Revolutionary Guard has built two prisons within the Valley Asr barracks, previously known as Ishrat Abad. The famous 66 prison is for public prosecution, and the other one, which is called 59, is built for solitary confinement. It has other prisons, like the infamous Karirzak prison, which was built by Radan. It is interesting that the Revolutionary Guard has launched its own intelligence service in parallel to the government's intelligence service, which itself is a repressive body, so that it can handle other issues. That is the Revolutionary Guard that arrests and tortures the bloggers. That is the Revolutionary Guard's duty to deal with the women and labor activists. All these show that the Revolutionary Guard, which is basically a military institution, has been now converted to an intelligence body and controls the government, and it is in fact the government itself. Is that really safe to assume that the Revolutionary Guard is one of Iran's most powerful economic institutions? Because we've seen that the Revolutionary Guard has played different roles in different areas from importing planes to exporting grapes. Does the Revolutionary Guard have such economic strength? Does it really play any significant role in the market? I'd like to know your opinion regarding these issues. One of the remarkable jobs of the businessmen was that they have been able to turn the country into a bazaar itself. That means they've turned the country's entire system into a bazaar, and naturally, when the country system is based on a bazaar and it is bazaar-oriented, all those who are involved with the politics have to adjust themselves to a bazaar and have to behave in a bazaar-like manner as a result. Clerical establishment exactly did the same thing. We have clergymen like Makarem Shirazi, who owns and is running export and import companies. The Revolutionary Guard, too, was not immune to such attitude, and it soon became a very strong economic actor. And, as I said earlier, the Revolutionary Guard was practically and very actively involved with economic activities at the end of the Iran-Iraq War. The Revolutionary Guard used Article 147 of the Constitution, which authorizes the military institutions to utilize their belonging for the construction of the country when it is at peace, as pretext to enlarge its power in all economic areas. The Katamal Anbia military base, which we talked about earlier, was awarded around 1,700 huge contracts by the government, and it has been able to make billions of dollars profit on those deals. Let me give you an example. The Revolutionary Guard owns an economic complex known as GORB. This company is said to be one of the biggest and most powerful contracting companies in Iran. That means all the government contracts and projects will be awarded to Revolutionary Guard-owned companies, which by now exceed 800 big and small companies inside and outside of Iran. The board of managers of the GORB company includes commanders of the ground, air, and naval forces of Revolutionary Guard, and the head of the management board is Najjar. What does exactly the GORB company do? According to one statistic, the company has so far completed 1,220 projects, and it has been running another 250 big projects during the past couple of years. The Revolutionary Guard has been increasingly involved with road and dam construction, the housing sector, petroleum and gas industries, and the facilities and resources of these companies. Because of their close ties to the Revolutionary Guard, these companies cannot be compared to other private companies seeking to compete with them. First of all, because of their ties to the Revolutionary Guard, these companies have more privileges than private companies. They are even in a better privileged position when Ahmadinejad became president, since he belongs to the Revolutionary Guard. Secondly, when a company is applying to get a contract, those who are assigned to assess whether or not the company is eligible usually don't look at the previous records of the company. A company will be awarded a project as long as it has a link with Revolutionary Guard, even if its previous record is gloomy. Thirdly, the companies which are competing to get a special contract have to provide the contractor with a financial proof and backing. And since the Revolutionary Guard has the government's huge financial resources in hand, they easily can win the competition. And we have seen that they have been able to win contracts worth billions of dollars. 
In numerous cases, we have seen that companies owned by the Revolutionary Guard have not been able to properly handle the projects, and they have ended up in a fiasco. It seems that no one's answerable. Yes, that is because those companies which are supposed to supervise the process are themselves being run by the Revolutionary Guard. For example, the company which is tasked with investigating the Gorb's financial affairs is being run by the Revolutionary Guard itself. That is why they are not answerable to anyone. There are numerous examples of inefficient projects done by the Gorb company because of low-quality work. It is interesting to know that the Revolutionary Guard even turned the sanctions to its own advantage. Due to the sanctions imposed on Iran, the big companies were either unwilling or unable to invest in Iran's oil and gas industries. The Revolutionary Guard invested heavily in those fields. For example, the 15 and 16 phases of South Pars gas field, which is a project valued at billions of dollars, are being run by the Revolutionary Guard. And wherever they face any problem, they look for a military solution. In one example, the Revolutionary Guard wanted to hold control over the Oriental Kish Oil Company, and when the owner of the company resisted, the Revolutionary Guard brought helicopters and warships and started firing at the company's employees, who were mostly Romanian. If you remember in 2000, the Turk Cell Company, which is a huge company and has even shares in the U.S. stock market, won a contract to launch the first mobile operator in Iran. But when the Revolutionary Guard realized that there were huge sums of money in the contract, they began to create problems for the company. First, they talked about security issues. Then, they talked about military issues. And at the end, Janati, who is close to the Revolutionary Guard, outlawed the contract as being against Iran's constitution. Then they said that 30% of the company's share should be given to the Revolutionary Guard, which the Revolutionary Guard found insufficient. Ultimately, they drove the Turk Cell Company out of Iran, and the Revolutionary Guard took charge of the contract. It was published yesterday that Telecommunications, which is the biggest and the most profitable governmental company in Iran, is expected to be taken over by the Revolutionary Guard. Let me give you an example of Imam Khomeini International Airport. Since the Revolutionary Guard was firm in its decision to take full control of the country's economy, it started questioning those companies which were involved in the construction of the airport. Ahmad Koram, who was the road minister at that time, was impeached by the members of parliament loyal to the Revolutionary Guard. And at the time of the dedication of the Imam Khomeini International Airport, the Revolutionary Guard brought armored vehicles and tanks into the airport, and it did whatever it could until it was able to take control of the airport. One of the members of parliament said something interesting. He said that during the first 18 months since the Revolutionary Guard took control of the Imam Khomeini International Airport, 